A little girl is shot in this Flint neighborhood. I'm Kristen Abraham. I'll have that story coming up. And I'm David Custer. Mother Nature seriously damaging one Flint neighborhood. I'll have that story coming up. Our camera's rolling as a mid-Michigan drug house is busted by the cops. Your only 10 p.m. news starts now. Good Wednesday evening. I'm Jim Kurtzner. And I'm Tara Edwards. The weather hits hard in one part of Mid Michigan tonight. Our first weather tonight takes us to an east side Flint neighborhood where residents are still asking, what is it? Fox's David Custer has the answer. It sounded uh, almost like a freight train, just for a matter of uh, a minute or less. It looks as if a tornado ripped through the state streets east of Interstate 475 in Flint. Trees down, power lines hanging, and debris all over the road and yards of residents. I was walking down Mabel and the branches come off, the tree limbs just right behind me. All of a sudden the wind kicked up and then this tree behind us here that fell almost came this close from hitting a bus. Around 2.30, more than a four block radius ravaged by what is being described as a straight line blast of wind. The guy was in the garage working and the roof raised up and he ran outside and the whole thing caved in. He just lucky to get out of there, I guess. And as you can see, the damage is pretty severe. This is just a chunk of a tree that fell on this house here on Broadway. And if you actually take a look down on Broadway, about four blocks, you'll see crews are working hard because there's more trees down there and wires down. And while we were here shooting this, a wire came down in our truck, meaning those crews got to be careful driving around here. And all of these down lines knocking out power. At its worst, 2,200 people in the dark. Consumer says it should be restored by midnight. We didn't know what was going on. We headed for the basement and heard glass flying everywhere inside the building and blew a couple windows out. In Flint, David Custer, Fox 66 News at 10. And at last check, there's still more than a thousand people without power tonight because of that brief but hard hitting storm. And after it cleared, the sun came out. So is it all over with? Let's check in now with meteorologist Lisa Teachman to find out. Tara and Jim will have a little bit of both as we head into the holiday weekend. Luckily, though, most of the rainfall has left us. Here was the troublemaker earlier today. That counterclockwise swirl meant the most intense thunderstorms passed right on top of Flint this afternoon. Saw some very gusty winds and also some pea-sized hail. You may have picked up some of that at your house and the drier air is starting to move in. A couple of showers in northern Wisconsin not expected to last much longer as they move down to the southeast. As they run into that drier air, they are being squashed as we speak. Let's see how this storm system has developed in the last 12 hours and frankly it did not have a lot of moisture to work with but do we really care? No, it caused the damage around here because right underneath that central core that is where we had the most intense part of that thunderstorm and boy they moved into a huge long line as they raced on over to New York and also Pennsylvania. Right now dry conditions in place but all of that will change. Here comes a warm front from the south tomorrow night. That means more rain and also warm temperatures through the weekend. More on this when I return coming up. A grandfather speaks out about his 11-year-old granddaughter shot while sleeping inside her Flint home. He says it's a reflection on the neighborhood. Fox's Kim Russell has the story. I'm thankful to God, you know, and to his son Jesus that she's still here. It's a miracle. It's definitely a miracle. Mary uh, Shepard's 11-year-old yeah. granddaughter, Dashanique Stockman, fell victim to yet another drive-by shooting on Flint's east side this morning around 5 o'clock at the Evergreen Regency Townhomes. The grandfather telling us this is how it played out. Dajanique was sleeping in her bedroom this morning when someone drove by and shot out the house, sending one bullet to the little girl's ankle. Her family still wondering why they're the target. Shocking to the family because nobody really has an idea of what really transpired in the whole process. Deborah McElroy lives in the neighborhood and says she's never had any problems living here. And despite the recent violence, she's staying put. Well, security out here is pretty, um, they're pretty good out here, you know, so I'm not going to move. You know, this stuff happens. It should be a concern of everybody, you know, for something like this to be happening in your neighborhood, you know. But I think people's lifestyles. Uh, is a reflection of things of this nature when things happen like this. Barry says Dashanique is out of the hospital, staying with her grandmother. The bullet is still in her ankle. Doctors won't operate until the swelling has gone down. If you have any information on this shooting, contact the Flint Police. In Flint, Kristen Abraham, Fox 66 News at 10. 
Only on Fox, Saginaw cops bust a known drug house, and it comes just as you're about to decide whether a public safety millage gets funding in a special vote next month. Fasten your seatbelt as Fox's Jamie Myers takes us along on the bust. 26 police and 20 firefighter jobs are in jeopardy. They'll be laid off if the May 2nd millage does not pass. Drug raids like the one you're about to see will be one area that will feel the impact. The Saginaw Area SWAT team raiding this known east side drug house, arresting two people, confiscating $500 worth of crack, $500 in cash, and finding a juvenile with crack. The millage doesn't pass. I won't have the investigative personnel to develop the information to get the search warrants. I won't have the uniformed personnel to form the raid teams to raid this place or these places. The officers also recovering a shotgun and handgun. They say customers knock on this window. The dealers watching to see who comes to the house with surveillance cameras. Show me where's. <laughs> We've been here before. This is the second time in only a few short weeks. Uh, we keep hitting them. They keep coming back. Uh, this is what uh, downgrades the neighborhood in any, uh, in any city. The raid is done by a special team, but the patrol officers are also feeling the crunch, getting backed up 20 calls at any given time. You can only imagine if there's three people working, how backed up we're going to get. And then you get a shooting. That's normally three people at a minimum to take care of just the scene. So there will be no cars available in the city. Some officers believe if the millage doesn't pass, the department would eventually be dissolved and taken over by the sheriff's department. There will be no doubt that the sheriff department, the state police, and even the departments that are put up to Saginaw, they're going to have to come in and help. Some seniors and low-income residents could be exempt from paying for the millage. You can find out more information on the city's website. Jamie Myers, Fox 66 News at 10. Some Fox follow-ups tonight. First, new developments in the case against a triple murder suspect. 27-year-old Patrick Selleback is charged in the February killings of Melissa and Scott Barrels of New Baltimore. Today, Selleback telling police that he had a sexual relationship with Melissa. Melissa's parents deny any relationship occurred. As for his fiance Samantha Bachinski, her lawyers say he plans to use statements from Selleback claiming that Bachinski was forced to take part in the crime spree. The pair are also charged in the killing of a Genesee County man. And police have charged a Genesee Township man in a shooting. 44-year-old Gregory Snyder facing pre premeditated murder charges for the shooting of 49-year-old Thadford Charles Jr. Charles found shot to death Sunday in the driveway of his father's home on Yale Avenue in Genesee Township. A prelim preliminary exam for Snyder is scheduled for April 19th. The recall against a Clio school board member is moving forward tonight. The county clerk says return petitions had a slight change in the language that had been approved. But county attorneys say it is acceptable once signatures are verified that recall will then go on the August ballot. The target is Larry Emmerling, who did a month in jail for stealing the superintendent's email along with three others. He's not been at a board meeting in weeks and is pre prevented from attending by the judge. A Flint man says he was ripped off after he was hired to fix up his dead brother's home. After months of getting the runaround, he knows who to call. Ah, uh, it was horrible. Henry Wedlow vividly remembers January 26th, the morning he found his brother and sister-in-law dead in their home. 75-year-old Green Wedlow and his wife, 74-year-old Catherine, had been robbed and shot to death at their house on York Street in Flint. Blood everywhere. After the murder, Timbertown Services was called in to clean and fix up the damage. They called to contract Henry to paint the walls and sand and stain the doors. Henry tells me State Farm Insurance out of Saginaw was supposed to pay him more than $500 for the work 10 days after the work was finished. But that was two months ago, and Henry hasn't seen a penny. When I got with the insurance company, they started prolonging it. After two weeks, I hadn't heard from him. I called him back, and he started giving me the run around. After getting nowhere with State Farm, Henry called Fox 66. I don't want to go through court with this. I would like for it just to be over with, and I think the Almighty could get the job done. What makes matters worse for Henry, this is the house his brother died in. As the trial approaches for the suspects accused of the murders, he tells us he just wants the money owed to him so he can focus on the court hearing. I have to come up here. I have to relive it all over again, you know, when I come in. It's not easy, but I'm the only one here. It's got to be done. 
We tried to contact Al Poole at State Farm. He did not return our calls. Stay tuned to Fox 66 as we continue to follow this story. Across America tonight, the prosecution has wrapped up its penalty phase in the trial of the so-called 20th hijacker, Zacharias Masawi. The jury is in the process of deciding if he gets the death penalty. And as Morris Jones shows us what jurors heard and saw in court today may have sealed his fate. What the jury heard were cockpit voice recordings from United Airlines Flight 93, destined for the Capitol building, but crashing into a Pennsylvania field after passengers interrupted the hijackers. What the jury saw was Zacharias Musawi smirking, then later shouting, God curse you all. The actual tapes were played only in court at the request of some victims' families. The famous words, let's roll, while heard over cell phone calls aboard the flight, are punctuated by the cockpit recordings, which begin with the hijacker's voice. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the captain. We have a bomb on board, so sit. Passengers are repeatedly told in English, don't move, shut up, sit, and down, down, down. Later, the terrorists were trying to shake off passengers who wanted to regain control. There is something, a fight? Yeah. Groans and sounds of a struggle. A voice says, I am injured. A hijacker asks, shall we finish it off? A voice is heard from the cockpit, probably a flight crew member, saying, please don't hurt me. Oh, God. Seconds later, somebody says three times, I don't want to die. The last sound heard as the plane nears the ground, Allah is the greatest, repeated over and over. When they were playing the recording of uh, Flight 93, and uh, apparently they were killing the pilot, the co-pilot, uh, Masawi was in there, um, was in there laughing. And the other thing, uh, right before he went out for lunch, he mentioned about uh, burning the rest of the Pentagon, and uh, um, that says it all. He needs to be put to death. Abraham Scott lost his wife Janice in the plane that hit the Pentagon. The defense presents its case in the sentencing phase next. I'm Morris Jones reporting. A month without a paycheck after their boss takes the money and runs. I'm Rebecca Rector. I'll have that story coming up. As Midland is preparing for their own baseball team, we talk to the general manager of a team who's already got into the swing of things in a big way. Still ahead on your only 10 o'clock news. Fox 66 News at 10 is brought to you in part by Superior Pontiac Cadillac. Superior Pontiac Cadillac presents basketball, automotively speaking, with Gordy Taylor and yours truly, George Blaha. Today's term is post up. Hey, Gordy, did you just post up another great low payment? I sure did, George. Superior's posting up low payments on a great selection of Pontiacs and Cadillacs. Hurry in before the end of the month for some great deals. And remember, automotively speaking, you can't do better than Superior Pontiac Cadillac. The nervous system is the body's master control system. Renaissance Chiropractic is the only chiropractor in Genesee County that offers the Pro Adjuster. Created by NASA, this system uses a revolutionary technique to locate the exact vertebra out of alignment. Every week, my body's banged up uh, like you wouldn't believe, and the Pro Adjuster is able to, uh, to get me back in shape. The Pro Adjuster, safe, effective, and proven results. Call Renaissance Chiropractic for a free consultation today. Renaissance Chiropractic, it's your future, be there healthy. Hi, I'm Johnny Burke from 96 WHNN. $50,000 could be yours if your birthday matches the one in the envelope. Tune in tomorrow morning at 720 for your first chance to win and the times to listen for more chances to win through the day. WHNN. Judge Marilyn and the People's Court weekdays at 3 on Fox 66. Doug follows his dream. I specifically forbade you from buying forbade this. Forbade me? Forbade? You can't forbade me. Tonight at 1130. Lost in the woods. I can get pneumonia and die. Just keeps getting funnier. Five young souls, scared and alone. At least I can have a conversation with a fish. And there's only one way to survive. <laughs> that 70 show. Thursday at 8 on Fox 66. Why the hell did I let you drive? Because you can't see anymore. I can see a house. Everybody loves rain. Tonight at 11 on Fox 66. A local pizza joint leaves workers waiting for their paychecks and wanting answers. Fox's Rebecca Rector has that story. Employees at this cottage inn on Miller Road have been working and waiting to get paid. 
and waiting and waiting. Everything was, seemed to be going quite smoothly at first, and then um, we got a phone call stating that someone, our, the new owner was taking over. Chris Mattis, now former owner of the chain, allegedly took off with the money in the safe one night weeks ago when he was still running the place. According to some employees, he just took the cash and hit the door. About three grand, and that would have paid part of our payroll, but I know we'll never see that. Leaving those that worked the month of March with nothing to show for it and all the bills unpaid. Delinquent on all the bills, too, because we're still getting calls. Manager Michaela Ward is still waiting to be paid for 200 hours. That's $2,000. Drivers, they have tips. They can have get by a little bit. I mean, whatever that, I mean, you know, just a little bit. But me, as, you know, I have bills. I have, you know, house payment and stuff. And the drivers that have been getting by on tips stop by to talk to Chris. His answer? He just told him to call the labor board. We tried talking to him, too. He hung up the phone on us, but his wife did tell us this. Does he plan on paying any of the employees? Through the bankruptcy, yes. If Christopher Mass files bankruptcy, then our claims are no good. Whatever legal remedies that I have. Employees have filed a complaint with the corporate offices. Now they're just waiting to hear back. Who knows if we'll ever get paid? In Flint, Rebecca Rector, Fox 66 News at 10. A little bit earlier, we showed you the storms that moved through, and now there's a warm-up on the way. Yeah, well, at least we know that spring is here since the rain came through. Absolutely. That's a sure sign. Yep. <laughs> Let's check in with meteorologist Lisa Teachman. Tara and Jim, we are in luck. Even though we had those strong storms pass through today, we will have a fairly dry day tomorrow, and temperatures not expected to cool down. You would think a storm system coming through, we would see a quick drop in temperatures. Not going to happen close to 70 degrees by tomorrow afternoon. Losing a good portion of that cloud cover tonight, but we will gain it again tomorrow. Mostly uh, sunny in the morning hours, then quickly partly cloudy, and eventually mostly cloudy as we get into the afternoon hours. A warm front will be coming up from the south, and that will be the main extent for the shower and thunderstorm development tomorrow night. But as you can see right now off to our west, with the exception of a couple of sprinkles and light showers in northern Wisconsin, pretty quiet. There's the storm system racing off to the northeast. We got the most intense brunt of that storm system as it continued to pass through Flint. Here's what I'm talking about in the last six hours. Right around 21 down southward. Watch this area as it continues to race eastward and then it blossoms right on top of Genesee County as it moves off to the east. Behind that, just a couple of showers and losing that cloud cover. Current temperature 54 degrees. The humidity at 80 percent. Westerly winds 13 miles per hour and the pressure continues to fall. Looking back in your almanac, 63 was the high, 55 was the low. Not too bad. We are still averaging above normal for the daytime highs and even the low this morning picked up about 25 hundredths of an inch of rainfall. There's the storm system that's moving away from us that prompted the showers and the intense thunderstorms that we saw earlier today. Not cooling down the temperatures at all by tomorrow morning. We'll be on the westward facing side of this storm system. The cold front now off to our east. And then here comes that warm front. It's going to come our way packed with just enough moisture. And it looks like some of these thunderstorms could be intense as we head into tomorrow night. And especially on Friday, be on guard. We're talking about strong to severe thunderstorms where hail and damaging winds could be a possibility. Forecast for tonight, no more rain at all. Partly cloudy, breezy, and chilly. In fact, those winds out of the west, 10 to 25 miles per hour. The overnight low, 46. Then up to 68 tomorrow. A mixture of sun and clouds for most of the day. The storms are not expected to roll in until after 8, 9 o'clock tomorrow night. The high around 68. Westerly winds, 5 to 15. In your extended forecast, a 40% chance that you could see a shower or a thunderstorm at your house on Friday. And look at that daytime high, 70 degrees. At least it'll feel great. We're just not going to like the rain that'll be coming out of those clouds. And then on Saturday, a break between storm systems. In fact, the storm track will be down to our south. And then it comes back our way again on Sunday. And officially on Sunday, that daytime high drops into the lower 60s. And then we warm up again on Monday. While there's rarely such a thing as an open and shut case, DNA evidence at a crime scene can go a very long way in convincing a jury. But is it the only important evidence when it comes to getting a conviction? 
There is no DNA evidence. With that announcement, many assumed the 46 Duke lacrosse players were home free. As but I the DA the insists he still has here. a case and this he case. will continue to pursue a stripper's allegations of rape. But can he prove his case without that seeming silver bullet? I think for starters, we have to acknowledge that just because there's no biological evidence of any kind, no DNA evidence, that doesn't mean an assault didn't occur. Thanks to TV shows and high-profile court cases, DNA has become a part of our daily vocabulary. It's hard to believe that it's only been available as a legal tool since the late 80s. Fifteen years ago, we hardly ever got to do DNA. Now, whenever anything happens, we, want, we turn to DNA to save the day. But experts say it's still possible to get a conviction even if you're facing a jury expecting neatly wrapped forensic proof. Legally speaking, if the victim says, that person right there forced me to have sexual intercourse, if that victim's testimony is believed, and every witness puts their credibility at issue, if that victim's testimony is believed, I think you absolutely can get a conviction. And the DA in Durham does not seem phased by the findings. He says DNA evidence is available in less than 25% of all sexual assault cases. And the lack of it does not mean nothing happened. It just means nothing was left behind. I'm Jennifer Gladstone. Most parents would do pretty much anything to keep their children safe, especially from catching a cold or worse. But what if a few germs could actually be good for your child? Details coming up in tonight's health news. Fox 66 News at 10 weather is brought to you nightly by Royal Gardens Flowers. Well, they call it home cooking for a reason. Now, this is Bob Evans' home. More than 50 years ago, he started with 12 stools and a promise to serve the best breakfast in town. Ever since, the mornings have come to mean Bob Evans. And folks have enjoyed the best sausage, the freshest eggs, and the flakiest biscuits around. And that's still Bob's promise. And we're keeping it. Welcome to Bob Evans. Rally's Pepper Jack Double Cheeseburgers are going as fast as you are because they're just two for three bucks. So go for it. Get two Pepper Jack Double Cheeseburgers for three bucks. Go to Rally's because you got to eat. You got to eat. <laughs> Hi, I'm Hank Graff. You know the average price of a new car is $25,000. The average price of a used car right now is $15,000. I've got an answer to these high prices. Low prices. The Graph dealerships wholesale cars that don't qualify for our certified lots. If you don't mind tinkering a little, you can buy them and save a lot. Graph has over 96 vehicles priced under $8,000. 77 priced under $6,000. 26 under $4,000. Some even under $1,000. Pay less at a Graph dealership near you. With winter thaws and spring showers upon us, the time is now to fix those leaks and bowing cracked walls before a minor situation becomes a major one. Call MidMichigan's leading basement repair specialist. R&M Foundations has over 30 years experience in block and poured wall repairs for both residential and commercial. From installing new drain tile, wall straightening, or structural basement repairs, R&M Foundations can take care of your problem as if it were their own. No matter how big or small, R&M does it all. Now you can go from this to this. With R&M Foundations, the leak stops here. Got spring fever? Max Suits has the cure. With 10 spa models priced as low as $18.88. But no more than $39.99. Purchase any Cal Spa or Caldera Spa and get our exclusive 30-day money-back guarantee. Want more? Round pools start as low as $8.99. Oval pools priced from as little as $17.99. And installation on any size pool just $2.99. Plus, hundreds of pool tables are priced from $9.99 to $19.99. Only at Max Suits. We have all the fun. Parents will typically go to great lengths to keep their children germ-free, but could exposure to germs early and often actually be good for your child's health? Elizabeth Cohen tells us more. Come on, let's go over to the children's department. We know what a lot of you are thinking right now. What kind of mother lets her baby crawl around in a department store, chew on a stick, and put a ball in her mouth that had just been in the dog's mouth? And then when you're done with this, do you disinfect her and wipe her off? Nope. Wait, it gets Everything. even better. Missing puffs? 
14-month-old Madison Sukenek eats right off the carpet of a doctor's office. And that doctor behind her? That's her father. So what did you say when he would come home in his scrubs and pick up the baby? I was mortified, and I would be asking him to take a shower twice and uh, change. And you thought she was crazy? Yeah. <laughs> what did you tell her? You know, that she's going to be exposed to things, that she's a baby, that she'd be fine. And as a matter of fact, Madison has been fine. She didn't have a single illness her entire first year of life. And now immunologists are coming around to Dr. Mark Sukenek's thinking. Many believe that exposure to germs early on might actually be good for a child, help them have fewer allergies, less asthma. What's the matter? What is wrong? Dr. Dennis Ownby, professor of pediatrics at the Medical College of Georgia, researches what's called the hygiene hypothesis, the theory that too much cleanliness might be one of the reasons so many children have allergies. The numbers have skyrocketed in recent years. Intuition would tell you the cleaner, the better. Right. But it sounds like that's not always true. Well, at least in terms of allergic disease, it doesn't seem to be true. But Kara Sherry isn't convinced. Oh, Kara bleaches girl. the grout in the kitchen floor, scrubs oh, down cabinets, disinfects doorknob after doorknob. Everything gets sanitized, and I feel good about it. <laughs> and in public places... I've got the wipes. I've got antibacterial spray. Kara wipes down the grocery cart and makes sure Carly can't touch the cart handle. And Kara says her way works. Her kids are rarely sick. We show Dr. Ownby video of Kara cleaning her house. I think this is probably more than is really necessary in terms of trying to prevent your family or your children from acquiring infections. Rub them together. He says basic hygiene is important, like hand washing. But much more than that really isn't necessary. And while you don't have to let your baby eat off the floor. Come here. You want the French toast? A few germs here and there might actually help your child stay healthy. Elizabeth Cohen, CNN, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. A minor league baseball team is on its way to mid-Michigan. I'm Jamie Myers, and I'll tell you what residents can expect. New information into the death of a rapper gunned down outside a Detroit nightclub. And she's married to the always controversial Michael Moore. Hear from her coming up. I am Avery Brand. I'm Jessica Wilson. Brandy Jefferson. Brian Tussler. Lisa Lakes. Stephen Drabick. Brad Erson. I am a student at U of M Flint. U of M Flint. U of M Flint. Discover the possibilities at the University of Michigan Flint. April is transfer month. Bring your transcripts to the admissions office or call to set up an appointment to start earning your degree. I am U of M Flint. I am U of M Flint. I. I. I am U of M Flint. 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 Hi, Mom. Yes, it's your mother. I was just checking in. Was that confetti? Your father and I are coming home right now, young man. A clear-sounding internet phone service. AT&T Call Vantage. The passion to invent. The drive to deliver. Another innovation from the new AT&T. Your world. Deliver. Are you having an affair? Then you need Ford's Party Rental. Ford's Party Rental is a family-owned and operated business out of Flint that has over 60 years of party rental experience. Ford specializes in making your event spectacular and can be as fancy and basic as you need. Looking for a tent? We've got plenty. Dishes, glasses, even more. Arches, vases, there are many. Tables, chairs, and linens galore. If you are thinking about having an affair, make sure you call us first at Ford's Party Rental located on Dye Road. This July, it's back. And it's better than ever. Performing live on stage at Fox 66, bringing it home, American Idol's Kimberly Locke. Part of a full day of entertainment for the whole family. It's fun for all ages. Free admission, free parking. Bringing it home returns July 22nd. A day mid-Michigan comes together. Log on now to WSMH.com for more details. Across Michigan tonight, as we've been telling you, Mid-Michigan is exactly one year away from its very own minor league baseball team. Fox's Jamie Myers looks at how the team could impact the area and from the city that's already hitting the long ball. 
For 10 years, the Lansing Lug Nuts have been hitting home runs, but some say the city is the biggest winner. I think if you just started with the ballpark and walked in any direction, that people would tell you that it's been a good thing. So obviously change is something that people are somewhat hesitant to, but that's okay. I mean, over the course of time, I think they'll see that it was a very good thing for them. More than a dozen bars, restaurants, and shops popped up when the stadium was built, and they keep coming. Here we are 10 years later, and there's still a boom that, that's continuing. to. So it doesn't stop once, once the ballpark gets built. Baseball is known as America's favorite pastime, and coming to a minor league game in Lansing or Midland could give fans a sneak peek at the heavy hitters of tomorrow. The thing that a lot of folks don't know is what Midland is getting is an affiliated baseball team. So that means that whoever the players are on the field are truly property of a major league club. You'll be able to say, oh, I saw them win. Um, and I remember when they were here type stuff, because you don't know who the great ones are going to be. Uh, but certainly every year there's four or five folks minimally that within three years will be playing in the major leagues. With tickets costing about seven to ten bucks, it's a great way to spend a summer day. It's a destination. I mean, just like people play in golf leagues. Why do they play in golf leagues? They're not going to beat Tiger on Sunday. Uh, but it's a thing to do. It's something to do. It's a weekly thing to do. Midland's team is expected to play ball next April. In Lansing, Jamie Myers, Fox 66 News at 10. You may not recognize her, but if you're from around here, you likely know the works of her husband, Kathleen Glenn, the wife of controversial filmmaker Michael Moore, making an appearance back home today. The award-winning producer herself speaking at Mock Community College's Women in Education fundraising luncheon. She spoke about her achievements as a producer and what it's been like to be a voting member of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. Our movies always lead us back to Flint for some reason. It's probably the place where we're most comfortable. Um, or that Flint is maybe a microcosm of what is happening all over the United States. Um, our uh, films deal with social issues and um, suggest ideas of how to change um, things to make things better. New developments tonight in the killing of a Detroit rapper. A man has turned himself in for the questioning in the shooting death of Proof, whose real name is Deshaun Holton. Police say Proof fired the first shot at a Detroit nightclub, striking a man in the head and critically injuring him. The shooting occurred yesterday outside the CCC Club, a bar along 8 Mile. Proof was a member of the rap group D12 and was the best man in the rapper Eminem's wedding in January. All right, the weather has finally warmed up. You know, we've been complaining for several days, and we would like it to stick around maybe even into the weekend, even though we're going to have to suffer through some April showers. What do you think? I'm just hoping it gets a little warmer. I can deal with the showers, but, you know, yeah. not the cold weather. Yep. <laughs> anyway, let's check in now with meteorologist Lisa Teachman to see if a warm-up is on the way. The rain is gone. That means we will see some stars tonight and warm temperatures again for tomorrow. I know it's hard to believe with the storm system coming through that you would see cooler temperatures as opposed to warmer temperatures, right? Well, that is not going to happen in this case. That storm system cruising off to the northeast means we'll get that return flow coming from the south before you know it out of the west tonight, 10 to 25 miles per hour. So hang on to your hat because it will be a windy one and it looks like some of that wind will stick around for tomorrow. Temperatures.